In this video I want to give you a complete guide with everything you need to know to have an amazing holiday in Tenerife. Hi everyone, my name is Eve and this is what I do. I create holiday and travel guides. Also for Tenerife I traveled all over the island, went to all the different holiday destinations, found out what you should do, what you shouldn't do, when you should go, how you should get there and a lot lot more in this video. Everything compacted down into one video with everything you need to know to have the perfect holiday on Tenerife. In the first part of this video I want to give you a quick overview of all the different holiday destinations on Tenerife so you can choose the right one for you and see if Tenerife is actually right for you or not. Also in this part I want to give you my top 10 hotels after visiting over 80 hotels on Tenerife. These are the top 10, my personal top 10 best ones. I've also got a more complete list on my website where you will find all the hotels I selected at checkedholidays.com if you want to see more hotels. The first destination I want to cover is the Golf del Sur area. This one is very close to the airport. There's a few hotels here and there's a large shopping bars and restaurant center here as well. This area is very popular with people who like to play golf, but there's also other holiday makers and tourists that like to come here. In general, this area is one of the cheaper ones compared to many of the other destinations in Tenerife. This area has a beach, but it's not really the nicest one. Just on the outskirts of Golf del Sur, you will find the San Dos San Blas, which is one of my top 10 hotels on Tenerife. It's an all-inclusive complex, so meaning if you like great food and drinks, all you can eat, it's, this is the place for you. It's set on a very large area, which means that there's lots of activities like kayaking and even wall climbing possible within the hotel. And it's great for a family holiday in the Golf del Sur area. Going a little bit further towards the south, you will find the Costa del Silencio as well as the Las Galletas right next to it. The Costa del Silencio is more popular with Belgian and Dutch tourists as well as French. The area has a nice place to swim near the Costa de Amaria. The Costa del Silencio in Tenerife has seen better days but recently has started improving and investing again. An added bonus is the Las Galletas area next door. It feels very Spanish and also the prices are pretty Spanish and pretty friendly. The next destination is Los Cristianos. This is one of the more popular holiday destinations in Tenerife. It's very well known. It still has a nice authentic Spanish feel, but with a little bit more development like white sandy beaches and a lot of different choice of restaurants catering to all kinds of nationalities. The resort is also a little bit more busy than the Costa del Silencio and the Golf del Sur that we have mentioned previously in this video. The last few years, they also started offering some great adults only hotels in this area. One of these really nice adults only hotels in Los Cristianos is the H10 Big Sur. It's also in my top 10 of best hotels in Tenerife. It got a really nice compact and personal feeling. There's a great rooftop relax area from where you have amazing views over the ocean, the beach and pretty much entire Los Cristianos. And this is just all around a great adults only holiday for people who like to have a relaxing holiday in Tenerife. Next up is another very well-known holiday destination in the south of Tenerife. This is the Playa de las Americas. This is known for being a nightlife, clubbing and party destination, but it's also very family friendly. In the Veronica's area of the Playa de las Americas, you have most of the party, nightlife and clubbing, but most of the rest of Playa de las Americas is becoming much more family friendly. It's also coming a lot more upscale restaurants, a lot more upscale shopping, and it just all around has a great nightlife there's also many different types of beaches to choose from in the Playa de las Americas area. Here you also find another one of my top 10 best hotels on Tenerife, the Spring Hotel Bitacora. This is great for a family holiday. It's got really a lot in the hotel for kids. There's different kinds of slides, water slides. There's a big playground, big mini club, really great for children. It's got also a great central location. So if you do like to go out and explore the town or go to the beach, you're really in the ideal location for all of this in this hotel. And also nearby, you will have a very active nightlife of the family friendly kind. So if you're looking for this, a great hotel, the Spring Hotel Pitacora. 
Next up is one of the more famous holiday destinations in Tenerife. It's also because it's the biggest and most people go here. It's the Costa Adega. It's one of the more upscale areas in the south of Tenerife. The Costa Adega also has a lot of different nice beaches to choose from, like the Playa del Duque. And because of all of these things you can find here and the upscale kind of vibe this resort has, you find many great five-star hotels here, a lot of upscale shopping centers, and great choice of restaurants. So this is also one of the more pricey holiday destinations in Tenerife, even though you can find pretty much something for everyone's uh, budget, but all over, I would say it's going more towards the more upscale, more pricey area on Tenerife to go on holiday. There are a lot of great hotels in this area and one of these that I also included in my top 10 is La Plantation del Sur or the Vinci Collection La Plantation del Sur. Why? Because there are simply loads of different swimming pools in this hotel for adults or for children or if you just like to swim distances or have a relaxed pool, you can all find it in this hotel. It's also very close to the Playa del Duque and overall located in a very luxury and upscale area fitting with this hotel. Hotel. Next up is the Rio Arecas, it is located in a very nice area of the Costa Adeje next to the newest beach, a whole new beach that they put here, especially for these new hotels in this area. It's also got a very nice relaxed adults only vibe because this is an adults only hotel. So if you like to be close to a nice beach, have a nice relaxed vibe and have an adults only holiday in the Costa Adeje, this is definitely one of the best hotels you can choose. Also another one of my top 10 hotels in Tenerife is the Jardines de Nevaria, also in the Costa Adeje. It's next to a great beach. It offers really truly authentic five-star luxurious vibe in the hotel and it's all over a very central location. So if you like to be close to everything but have a very nice luxurious classy hotel then this is a great destination for you. The last hotel I definitely had to include in the Costa Adeje is the Colón Guanahani. It got a really nice fresh summery vibe, a nice compact and personal feeling and it's great for an all-round adults only holiday in Costa Adeje, close to everything, close to the beaches in a great location. About two or three kilometers away from the Costa Adeje, you will find the Playa Paraíso. Playa Paraíso technically is still part from the Costa Adeje, but it's a bit separated from the main resort. It's also a more small resort, I would say. There's a few nice small beaches, not too much nightlife, and an overall relaxed vibe in this area. If you're looking for a nice and original hotel in this area, then I can definitely advise the Hard Rock Hotel Tenerife. There's many reasons for this, one of them being the very nice beach club they have. It also offers a very unique experience, I would say one of the more unique hotels in Tenerife. And there's also many different restaurants you can choose from within the hotel. So also if you like to eat good, definitely a great destination for you. Here you will also find the Bahia Principe de Tenerife. This is a great all-inclusive family hotel, I would say. The hotel itself is practically town size, so meaning you can find everything you want within the hotel. And this also means that there's lots to do, lots of choice and lots of entertainment for everyone coming on holiday in this hotel. Tour to the Playa Paraíso, you will find the Callao Salvaje. This is one of the cheaper holiday destinations with mostly two and three star hotels. But there's also a really nice relaxed vibe here and it got a pretty nice beach as well. You can walk in between the Playa Paraíso and the Callao Salvaje in about 15 minutes. A little bit further away you will also find Puerto Santiago and Los Gigantes area. There is everything here, just a little bit less of it, from bars to restaurants to shops and nightlife. This area is also one of the lesser known but it's quite nice as well. Just keep in mind that this area is pretty hilly and therefore might be less interesting for holiday makers with babies or disabilities. You can also find a few very nice family friendly hotels here but I did not end up including them in my top 10 selection but they are are very nice as well. Also the harbor area is very nice and there's a few small beaches. 
The next hole, the destination, is further towards the north. It's one of my favorite ones on Tenerife, is Puerto de la Cruz. Why do I like this place so much? Well, it's because it's a real town uh, with some hotels mixed in. It's not just a lot of hotels next to a beach, which makes it a little bit less touristy here, which I very much like, but it's still a very popular holiday destination on Tenerife. Also, because it's in the north, it's more lush and green here because of the microclimate. Just keep a little bit in mind that if you do go in winter, you have a little bit of rain here because of that same reason. In Puerto de la Cruz there's also two great beaches. This resort is very popular with an older generation looking for a more relaxed holiday destination and randomly enough also Finnish people and a lot of Scandinavian people like to come here. Also here you find one of my top 10 hotels on Tenerife is the Hotel Botanico, also known the Hotel Botanico and the Oriental Spa Gardens to give the full name. One of the reasons is that it's in a very quiet location here on uh, Puerto de la Cruz. It's got many years of proven excellence. It's been here for many, many years and all these years have been giving great holidays. And there's also a very large spa. So if you like to come to a more authentic and original holiday destination on Tenerife, but still like to have a luxurious and relaxing holiday, this is a great holiday destination for you on Tenerife. Santa Cruz is the capital of Tenerife, but also one of the cheaper places to go on holiday in Tenerife. This is, uh, just to give you a quick comparison, like a good mojito here will be around 3 to 4 euros, while in the more touristy destinations it easily is 7 or 8 euros. However, Santa Cruz is also a very nice place. There's lots to see and do here. Um, there's also a few hotels in town, nice hotels, but uh, the beach is 8 kilometers away, so do know if you come here on holiday, stay for for only a few days or it's only a very good place if you're renting a car to come on holiday. So do keep this in mind. I wouldn't advise coming here without a car for longer than a week. I think you will get a little bit bored. So three or four days I think ideal or if you have a car then you can also stay here much longer. El Medano is more towards the south again. It's one of these small and authentic Spanish holiday resorts, which at the moment I am making this video mostly budget hotels with not really the best ratings. It is very popular with surfers and people visiting it for just two days. Many pro surfers also come here to practice. The whole resort has this really kind of bohemian and hipster feel, which makes it really nice place to visit, if not for your entire holiday, just to for like a day trip or pause here at least once during your holiday. In the next part, I'm gonna talk a bit more on what to do while you're on Tenerife, what Tenerife has to offer, because there's loads of nice beaches, there's loads of things to do on the island, things to see on the island, things to experience, loads of parks and zoos to go to. So this I wanna cover in this next part of this video. The sea and water park, in my opinion, is simply Awesome. I have been to a lot of water parks in Spain, but also in many other countries. I must say that this is definitely the best one I have been to, so I can definitely advise you to go and have a look there. I'm always very skeptical when an attraction claims to be the best water park in the world or the best of anything in the world. In this case, they claim to be the best water park in the world. I haven't been to every water park in the world, of course, but from the ones I have been to, this is definitely a true claim and definitely a park I can advise you to go and visit. Garachico is a nice, authentic little town in between the south and the north. And while I enjoyed my coffee in the center of town, the main attraction here are the Piscinas Naturales El Cayeton. That was very hard to pronounce. These are naturally occurring set of swimming pools in the sea, so saltwater pools. They are free to enter and could offer a refreshing trip before continuing with your drive, whether you're driving from the north to the south of Tenerife or from the south to to the north of Tenerife. If you take this side of the island, you will definitely enjoy taking a swim here before driving on. The dolphin and whale watching boats can be a lot of fun. Just make sure that you pick one of the better boats as there are many different companies offering these type of excursions. While you are for sure going to see dolphins, 99% for sure, the whales might not show up. Just keep this in mind. It depends a little bit on the weather and just how lucky you are. Um, but with swims and snorkeling often included and great views from the coastline, you are still for sure gonna have have a great morning or afternoon or full day out. 
The Anaga Nature Reserve is located all the way in the north of Tenerife. While I did not know what to expect, it was amazing to me. I think it's one of the most jungle-like areas that you will find in Europe. Lush and green with lots of birds, uh, salamanders, butterflies, a lot of fauna and flora. It's a nice area just to drive through, but there are many long and short hiking and walking tours here as well. So definitely if you want to see a unique part of of Tenerife, I would definitely advise you to go and have a look here. One of the most often claimed things that you do have to do is to visit Tide, uh, Tide D. I don't know how you pronounce this exactly in English, but if you want to go here, you could do it. Just keep it in mind, it's a long bus ride up there, and often it's also very crowded and a long way to take the cable carts up for the mountain. Personally, I'm not so big a fan of it during the daytime, but what I can advise you especially is to go in the evening or at sunset. There are organized excursions for this, um, but you can also drive up with your own car. If the weather is good, you will be treated to an amazing star sky. You can see almost nowhere else in Europe or in the evening, a very nice place to see the sunset. So it depends a little bit on what you want to do. The daytime is the more common thing. It's fine. I'm personally not a big fan of it because there's just too many people and it takes away from the experience. Um, but I would definitely advise you to visit Tide at night or in the evening. If staying in the south, drive to the north at least one day during your holiday. And if you're staying in the north, then drive to the south at least one day during your holiday. Well, the south is the most popular place to stay in Tenerife because of easy airport connection and the better microclimate in that area. It's a bit more dry there, there's less rain. The north is much more interesting in my opinion. It also looks completely different and much more lush and green it is in the north. This is is also where you will find some of the nicer and more secluded beaches on the island. So also if you like to go to some really nice beaches without all the tourists, then the north is also very interesting. Just to get to see the difference, I would advise you, if you're staying in the north, drive to the south at least one day. And if you're staying in the south, drive to the north at least one day. In the north of the island, in Puerto de la Cruz, you will find the Loro Park Zoo. This zoo is from the same company behind CM Water Park. That is the best water park in the world. And the same quality you will find in this zoo as well. There are lots of live shows in the park that keep it interesting for the entire family. So if you are anywhere near the north, definitely go and have a look at the Loro Park. If you're not anywhere near the north, you might still want to consider driving there, especially if you have a family with younger children, uh, to go and have a look there at the zoo. Santa Cruz is the capital and together with Puerto de la Cruz, the more real and authentic Tenerife in my opinion. You will not find many tourists here except for those who like to do shopping as it is much cheaper here than many of the more touristic places on the island. There are lots of shopping centers here also if you do like to shop. Also for meals and drinks you will pay much much less in the, than in the touristy areas of the south. Together with a visit to Enegar Nature Reserve or Playa de las Teresitas Beach, this makes for a great day out in the north of Tenerife. Tenerife has a lot of different beaches from black sand to white sand. Here are my top five beaches I can definitely advise you to visit while on holiday in Tenerife. On number five is the Playa de Benijo and this is located all the way on the other side of the island from where most people are staying on the island. So really all the way in the north. If you are going to drive here then do stop at a few places along the way because it's quite a far drive but really worth it. It's a really secluded beach. Not too many people know about it. If you're going to go there stop maybe at Santa Cruz or the Anaga Nature Reserve along the way um, and do pay attention also that you actually go to the Playa de Benijo because there's a one beach in front of it. A lot of people think that is the Playa de Menijo, but the Playa de Menijo is really tucked away out of sight. So wait until you see the sign Playa de Menijo, there's the Playa de Menijo. 
On number four, there's a beach that is much more easy for people to get to because it's all the way in the south. This is the Playa del Duque and definitely one of the most beautiful beaches in the south. So if you have the opportunity to come here, do come here. Maybe bring your own food and drinks because restaurants and bars around this area are pretty pricey and pretty upscale and pretty expensive. So do keep this in mind, but you can also find some things that are in a better price range. El Medano is very popular with people liking to come here to surf, windsurf or kitesurf and it's got this really kind of bohemian vibe that is really authentic and really nice. The beaches here are also very nice, there's a lot of them so just for the whole seaside surf atmosphere, relaxed bohemian vibe, this is a great beach to come to and I would definitely advise to come here at least once during your holiday if it's not to come to the beach just to explore at least the town and the village. Another beach I can definitely advise is again in the north of the island near Puerto de la Cruz, the Playa del Jardín. This is a really nice, beautiful, typical Tenerife style beach with the black lava sands that they have here. It's really nice because it's also near Puerto de la Cruz, so you have a, a nice little city to explore there as well. Um, there's also lots of other things that you can do nearby, like the park, uh, Loro Park is also near here. So for all of these reasons, with all the things that is to see, here nearby and that I would definitely advise you to visit at least if you're staying in the south at least one time in your holiday the north for all of these reasons I definitely want to advise this beach. Then on number one is the Playa de las Teresitas near Santa Cruz. This is a very nice beach, but it's not for the reasons that you think it is. If you look at pictures of the Playa de las Teresitas, it always looks perfect, very idyllic. And I wouldn't say it is, so why it is on my number one? It is mostly because it's got this really authentic Spanish vibe. It's also a very nice beach, just not as beautiful and perfect as it looks on many of the pictures, but a very nice beach with a very authentic authentic Spanish vibe. There's loads of like little food trucks and also there is rumor that in the next years they're even going to upgrade this area. I hope they're going to make it better because now it still really has this authentic feeling vibe. Definitely on number one the Playa de las Teresitas. So I talked a little bit about what to see and do while you're in Tenerife and this next part I want to talk a little bit more about what not to do and what to avoid as I think it's quite important that you are informed about these things as well. Street flyers or street excursions, I normally call these kind of things, you will find them pretty much all over Spain and also many other destinations, but especially in the bigger resorts on Tenerife like uh, Playa de las Americas, Los Cristianos and also Costa Adeje, you will find most of these. Leave these flyers alone if you see them, normally they offer some kind of a cheap excursion um, but it's often included some kind of a timeshare pitch or another long sales presentation that you have to sit through so unless you want to waste a day to save a few euros on your excursions leave these flyers where they are and don't pick them up just throw them in the trash if you see them don't go on these kind of excursions Whatever you do, don't buy any electronics in Tenerife. At least in my opinion, often people think that electronics are much cheaper in Tenerife because of the taxes, and in a way this is true, but the difference is not very big. However, there are a lots of stores that take advantage of this. You can find many bad reviews online. Don't take my word for it. You can find these all over the internet. These are often selling you fake brands or they run credit card scams on your credit card or they're doing upselling or hard selling or any such thing all these people act very nice but they don't have your best interest in mind if you don't need to buy any electronics urgently then don't buy them in Tenerife and if you do urgently need to buy electronics I would advise you to go to one of the name brand stores like you have a media mark in Tenerife you can go and have a look there but you will find that there are not very extreme cheap deals on Tenerife. So Tenerife is a really big place actually if you see it on the map it's just this tiny little island but it's actually quite big there's a lot of things to see and one of the things I would definitely advise you is to rent the car but one of the things to watch out for is to not book it with the wrong company. There's a lot of kind of trickster companies uh, this is not a typical thing to Tenerife but they're popping up more and more wherever I 
pretty much travel and I stand in the airport, I see people having problems with these same companies. So definitely you want to avoid them. I have an article on my website as well as another video here on YouTube where I discuss what to do and what not to do when booking a car in Tenerife, but also what companies to book with and what companies definitely not to book with. Uh, one I can definitely advise for Tenerife is also the one I used and this is not sponsored or anything. This is Top Car. Uh, just book the full insurance with them you can pay in cash even if you want uh, it's very easy and you, i never had any issues i use them pretty much all over the canary islands i use them multiple times uh, just uh, pay in cash and make sure you have the full insurance but if you're booking with any other car company car rental company definitely have a look at that video or on my website before doing so Tenerife you can visit all year round. There's a decent climate all year round, but it is different in winter and in summer, not only with temperature and rainfall, but also with the kinds of people who are there. So in this next part, I wanna give you a quick guide to when to go to Tenerife. Winter time in Tenerife are the months of November, December, January, February and March. And some people believe that it is the hottest there in winter. This is of course not true, it's hottest in summer. But still the winters here stay very nice and warm as well. Average temperature of 21 degrees on average for the high and low of 15 degrees. But there's also many days it's going to be much much hotter. There's 5 days of rain a month on average and the sea, temp sea temperature is still around 19 degrees Celsius. The hottest summer months are the months of May, June, July and August, but also September. These are the months that it's typically the hottest and that there is the true summer beach weather. This is in, with a high of about 25 degrees on average and low of 19 degrees on average. But these are averages, so there's also going to be much many, many days that is going to be much hotter as well. There's not going to be any rainy days normally with only one day of rain on average a month and the sea temperature is going to be very nice at 22 degrees. So the two months that are in between summer and winter are April and October. It's not really summer weather, not really winter weather. The average is around 24 degrees on the high and on the low average is around 17 degrees. There's three days of rain a month and the sea temperature is also still quite nice. Together with March and November, normally around this time, you can find the best deals as long as you're traveling outside of the Easter holidays. In the next part, a quick guide of how to get from the Tenerife airports to your hotel or your resort fast, easy and cheap. The first thing you need to know is that Tenerife has two different airports. There's the one in the south and the one in the north and they're really quite far apart. Each year many people fly to the wrong airport or are not aware of this. So this is the first thing you want to pay attention to. If you book your flight, make sure you book a flight to the right airport. From both of these airports, there are several different ways to get to your final destination, to your hotel or your resort. The first way is to take the public bus or the public transportation. This is quite easy because you can just buy the ticket on the bus. You don't need to reserve or book it anywhere else, just buy it on the bus. Do know that for quite a few locations, actually there's no direct route depending on from where you're traveling. So you might have to change bus along the way. And even then the buses, they may stop actually quite far from your hotel, leaving you with quite a bit of walking before you make it to your hotel. Do know also that it's not for late arrivals as many of the buses in Tenerife, especially the long distance ones, don't run very late. From the South Airport for all the nearby destinations, El Medano, Golf del Sur and Costa del Silencio, the price is about 2 euro 50. A little bit further away, Costa Adeje, Playa de las Americas and Los Cristianos is 4 euros. Even further away is Los Gigantes and Puerto Santiago, Callao Salvaje and Playa de las Americas is about 8 euros. But it's important to know that there's no direct line, so you will have to transfer most likely in Costa Adeje to get to your final destination. All the way on the other side of the island in the north is about 12 euros for Puerto de la Cruz and Santa Cruz. Traveling from the north airport to El Medano, Golf del Sur, Costa del Silencio will cost you 12 euros. To the south destinations is also about 12 euros and to the further away destinations is 15 euros and do know that there's no direct line. To the nearby airport from the north, Santa Cruz and Puerto de la Cruz is only about 5 euros. 
Another way, and in my opinion a better way, is to book a shuttle bus. The only thing, do know that you have to book these ones in advance online. You cannot get on at the airport. You will be dropped off at your reception and not some random bus stop. It's also the same or an even better price than using the public transportation. And there's no need to transfer on the other buses. You just get on at the airport and they will drop you off at your final destination or the reception. These normally have a very easy price for pretty much all the destinations in the south from the south airport. They're only 5 euros. Also, if you want to go a little bit further away, like Los Gigantes and Puerto Santiago, they are 10 euros. If you want to take the bus all the way, the shuttle bus, all the way to the other side of the island, then it's 18 euros for Puerto de la Cruz. But do know that you cannot take these to Santa Cruz at the moment. From the south it's very good but from the north airport for as far as I know there's no companies where you can just book a ticket. You can get them in to include it with like a package deal but just a separate ticket for as far as I know from the north you cannot get this kind of service. As I mentioned before, these shuttle buses are really good. They're really easy to use. The only thing is you have to book them before online. You cannot get them at the airport. Um, for all the companies I would advise, have a look on my website, checkedholidays.com slash links, where I also have links to all the other companies I like to use when traveling. Taking a taxi from the north or south is definitely the fastest way to getting to your hotel. Do know that this comes a little bit at a higher price, but if you're traveling four or more people, most of the time it works out. Uh, one thing I do want to say that there are no fixed prices for the taxis unless you book before online. Uh, if you get stuck in traffic or the taxi driver doesn't know exactly where to go, the price for the taxi will go way up. Also in the weekends and in the evenings, the prices are more expensive. Also at the airport, it's very rare that you can get a child safety seat so if you're traveling with small children this is also not the best way of doing it. If you want to have child safety seats, want to have a fixed price and want to know for sure that you can fit more than four people if you're traveling five or six people then I would always advise you to book before online to make sure that all of these services are there. As I mentioned before, the taxis at the airport don't have a set or a fixed price, so the prices can change, but here are estimates of how they are more or less. For the nearby destinations from the south, it's about 15 euros. If you want to go a little bit further away, then it's about 25 euros. Even further away to Callao Salvaje and Playa Pariso is 35 euros. And the furthest away from the south airport is 65 euros. If you want to go all the way to the other side of the island, to the north, it's about 100 euros or more. If you're traveling from the north airport and to go to El Medano, Golfo del Sur, Costa del Silencio is 90 euros. A little bit further away is 100 euros. Even further away is about 110 euros. And if you just stay nearby in the north, then it's 35 euros for Puerto de la Cruz or Santa Cruz. As I mentioned before, booking before online is definitely the way to go in my opinion. You can also find all the links for taxis on my website, checkedholidays.com slash links to the companies I like to use. If you're not 100% sure if this is the right holiday destination for you, feel free to have a look at any of these other videos. I have 250 more guides here on YouTube at the moment. And of course, you can also find many more on my website at checkedholidays.com.